It's Monday morning, I'm recording this at 4am, and Intel has just had their Computex keynote. We've got new Tiger Lake CPUs, we've got a delay on Sapphire Rapids, there's a new 5G modem from Intel, and we've got news about Older Lake. What's your minimum specification? So this week is the annual Computex trade show held in Taiwan. Now, nobody's traveling anywhere, so it's a virtual conference, but because it's held in Taiwan, they're holding it at Taiwan times. Hence, I'm awake really early in the morning, and it, the uh, Intel keynote was held at 10 p.m. Eastern time, 7 p.m. Pacific. So everybody's a little bit tired, and this is why I look like this right now, because I'm running on three hours sleep. But in the pre-recorded presentation, we heard from Intel on a number of topics that I'd like to go through with you. First up is this new Tiger Lake U refresh processors. Now, we had learned about a month ago as part of Intel's Partner Connect conference, where they speak to OEMs and partners, that the goal was to launch a new Tiger Lake refresh processors later in the year before Alder Lake comes to desktop and mobile. We get the first two of these refresh processors, the Core i7-1195G7 and the Core i5-1155G7. Quad core, eight thread. Nothing really exciting here between the two, except that the Core i7 now boosts to 5.0 gigahertz in single core turbo. That's using Turbo Max 3.0, which is what Intel calls its favored core technology. So that means one of those four cores can hit five gigahertz. In order to do that, We've also got another plus 300 megahertz or so on the all-core turbo, but we've lost 100 megahertz on the base frequency. Now, these refresh processors are 15 watts, 28 watt. Intel looks like it's going to focus more on the 28 watt version for at least the Core i7. And these will fit into the stack with the uh, Iris XELP graphics, 96 execution units. We've got a new peak 1400 megahertz frequency at the top end. But it's very much the same process as what was looking like before. Now, given that we'd heard about Tiger Lake U refresh, uh, like I said, a month ago, we were assuming that these were going to have LPDDR5 support, given that that is still one feature of Tiger Lake that hasn't been realized into product yet. Unfortunately, these products are still LPDDR4X and DDR4, so we're really hoping to see Tiger Lake with the LPDDR5 version at some point, sometime, maybe we're going to get more of a refresh later in the year. Also part of the news is Intel's new march into 5G. Now, if you've been following Intel's 5G story, you'll know that they were quite late getting on the 5G bandwagon. Um, they had some success with their 4G uh, modems been going into Apple iPhones, but then the 5G stuff didn't really materialize that well, and they eventually sold the business unit to Apple for about a billion dollars, and with that went about 2,000 employees as well. In order to develop 5G for their platforms, they had to partner with MediaTek, of all people, and now the first product of that partnership is coming to fruition in the Intel 5G Solution 5000. I am pleased to announce we are launching the Intel 5G Solution 5000, our first 5G product for the next generation of PC experiences. This is Intel's first 5G product coming out from our previously announced collaboration with MediaTek with global certification. This is actually an M.2 module, but it doesn't conform to M.2 specifications. Normally M.2 specifications are like 2232, 2240, 2280. So that's 22 millimeters wide and either 30, 42 or 80 millimeters long. This one is 30 millimeters wide and 52 millimeters long. So it won't fit in your standard M.2 slot support. I think this is because it allows Intel to basically define which platforms will be using the module because then you actually have to define the full M.2 slot around that size. It's meant to be a worldwide module. Uh, it supports sub six uh, gigahertz frequencies, uh, Verizon, AT&T, a load of the Chinese, a load of the European, and a load of the uh, Japanese carriers are supported. And I think there's also a couple of Australian ones in there as well. And the goal is that this is targeting both the Tiger Lake and Alder Lake platforms, though Acer has already announced that they're developing a base station with it inside. I suspect we'll hear more later in the year. Now, an interesting kind of announcement that we weren't really briefed on is Intel's Sapphire Rapids. This is their next generation Xeon scalable platform. It's going to be using PCIe 5, DDR5, CXL, and it's going to go into the Aurora supercomputer. 
Now, we were on the understanding that Sapphire Rapids would launch this year in 2021. Intel has a contract to supply the Aurora supercomputer and all its hardware by the end of the year. Now, originally, the Aurora supercomputer was meant to be shipped in 2019 with Knight's Hill Xeon 5 processors, and they essentially got a do-over, and now it's meant to be provided by the end of the year. Now, we'd always suspected that the Aurora supercomputer would be the first product with Sapphire Rapids, and then eventually it would come out more into the general availability market. Now, Intel for the first time today has confirmed that Sapphire Rapids won't be coming in 2021. It will be coming in 2022. And we suspect that's more of a comment about general availability. So when Intel Ice Lake third gen Xeon was launched, we were saying, well, isn't this so close to Sapphire Rapids? It looks like Sapphire Rapids has got at least another quarter in some ways in order to become generally available. So it was interesting to hear that from Intel today. I wasn't expecting to hear that. Now, the final piece of news uh, is Old Lake. Now, we know Old Lake is coming later this year with its high performance cores and high efficiency cores with this mix of DDR4 and DDR5. And you know, here's a video of me explaining why Intel should delay Old Lake until DDR5 is ready. But we had already seen that in CES, they had a version of a desktop processor running, which could have been desktop, could have been a mobile processor. But this time around, uh, during the keynote presentation at Computex, they were showing mobile systems using Alder Lake Mobile. We intend to continue our series of advancements this year. Our upcoming product, codenamed Alder Lake, will deliver the next set of compute advancements that the industry is looking for. As we previewed at CES, our Alder Lake desktop processor is powered on and running smoothly. And I'm also excited to share that Alder Lake Mobile is also powered on and executing beautifully. We're sampling to customers and partners as we speak, and there's going to be a lot more to share on the entire Alder Lake lineup later this year. Stay tuned. And they're committed, again, to providing uh, Old Lake by the end of the year. Still not being committal about exactly which platform is coming first and in what form and you know what sort of target performance they're going for. I expect to hear more about that at the Intel Innovation event for press. That's actually going to be in person in October. Um, I'll be getting my second jab in August, so hopefully... We'll all be flying again, and I'll get to go to that and get some hands-on with the systems with Alder Lake. Overall, compared to previous Computex announcements, this one from Intel is pretty light. Uh, because they're doing it to Taiwan time, it means that the uh, live stream keynote wasn't really that well attended. But we'll see. We've got AMDs tomorrow. Uh, we'll see if AMD actually gets uh, more viewers on that one and whether more will be said during the event. So what do you think? You're getting ready for Sapphire Rapids, getting ready for Old Lake, ready for new platforms, LGA 1700. Are you ready to invest?